Hello and welcome to Written Words. I'm Helen and this is another in our series of videos called Grammar Basics. And in today's video, we are going to look at nouns and pronouns. What are nouns? What are pronouns? And what function do they play in a sentence? So let's start off with the nouns. A noun is a name. The word noun means name. And a noun is a name of a person, a place or a thing. Some nouns, however, are easier to spot than others. Perhaps the easiest nouns to spot are the ones that we call proper nouns because they are the ones that we write with a capital letter. They are the given names of people or places, but not just people and places, also titles and institutions, all kinds of important names that are given capital letters. So, for example, someone's name, my name is Helen, so I write that with a capital letter. It is a proper noun. A place such as London is written with a capital letter. An organisation such as Written Words School of English, is written with capital letters. They're all proper nouns and they are quite easy to spot, but when you're writing them yourself, you need to remember to add that capital letter. All other nouns are called common nouns and they don't have a capital letter usually. They are written with a lowercase letter at the beginning. So these include things, objects, anything that you can see and touch is probably a noun. So book is a noun, house is a noun, car is a noun. They're all objects that we can see, we can touch. They're the names of real tangible things. So they are all nouns. However, there is another category of noun which is less obvious. And that is the category called abstract nouns. These can be things like feelings or emotions or qualities, things that you can't actually touch, but we have to give them a name if we want to talk about them. For example, happiness. We can't touch it, we can't see it, but we know it's there, so we need a noun to refer to it. Things like truth. Truth we know it's a thing, but we can't see it, we can't touch it, but we need to give it a name so that we can talk about it. Love, courage, intelligence, these are all abstract nouns. A good test of whether a word is a noun or not is whether you can put the words the or a in front of it. If it works with the or a, it's probably a noun. If it doesn't, it's probably a different part of speech. So you can say the book. You can say the delight in someone's face. You can say you need to tell the truth. They all work with the, so they must be nouns. Then let's move on to pronouns. Pronouns are usually quite small words that replace nouns. Pronouns make writing much nicer. If we didn't have pronouns, we would have to keep using the nouns over and over again, repeating them. So let's take the noun, the bus. If there were no pronouns, we would have to say something along the lines of, I saw the bus approaching. The bus was a bright red double-decker. However, when I got on the bus, I realised that the bus was the wrong bus. It doesn't sound very nice. We need to use pronouns to make it sound a bit more pleasant on the ears. So we would say something like, I saw the bus approaching. It was a bright red double-decker. However, when I got on it, I realised it was the wrong bus. So in that sentence, we still kept bus at the beginning and the end, but we've replaced the other ones with it. It is a pronoun. We do need to repeat the word bus occasionally so that we know what we're talking about. But in order to avoid using it too much, we can replace it with it. There are lots of different pronouns depending on what the noun is that we're replacing. So there are, for example, 
personal pronouns. The personal pronouns replace people or things. So they are words like I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Those are the ones that we use if the pronoun is the subject of the sentence. If the pronoun is the object of the sentence, and if you're not sure what subjects and objects are, have a look at our earlier video on subject, verb, object. If the pronoun is the object of the sentence, we would use object pronouns, which are things like me, him, her, us, them, and so on. Then there are reflexive pronouns for using when you do something to yourself, such as washing yourself or looking after yourself. And those are things like myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, ourselves, yourselves, themselves. There are possessive pronouns. If something belongs to a person, mine, yours, his, hers, its, ours, theirs, and so on. There are relative pronouns, which are little words like who or whom, that or whose. There are interrogative pronouns, which we use for questions. So who, which, what, whom, and so on. And there are also indefinite pronouns which include things like someone or no one, anyone or everyone, something or nothing, and so on. So the list of pronouns is very long, but for the purposes of this lesson, let's just look at their function in a sentence. As I mentioned earlier, they replace the nouns so that you don't have to repeat the noun every time. And they make the writing pleasanter to listen to or read. Let's have a look at an example. Let's look at the first sentence in Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. The first sentence says this. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversation? So in that sentence, we have a mixture of nouns and pronouns. Let's have a look now at how the sentence would look if there were no pronouns in it. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by Alice's sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice, Alice had peeped into the book Alice's sister was reading but the book had no pictures or conversations in the book. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversation? Not only does it sound very awkward and strange, it's also even a little bit more difficult to understand. So we add the pronouns. So instead of saying Alice's sister, we say her sister. Instead of saying Alice every time, Lewis Carroll uses it at the beginning and at the end to avoid confusion, otherwise you wouldn't know whether he was talking about Alice or her sister. And then in between, when it's clear he's talking about Alice, he replaces the word Alice with she. And the same with the book. He doesn't want to say book every time. If it's clear that he's talking about the book, he can replace it with it. So pronouns make writing much nicer. Why not try opening a book of your own and look at a couple of sentences in there and see if you can spot where the writer has used nouns and where the writer has replaced those nouns with pronouns. If you're interested in learning more about the written word, the English language and its literature, do have a look at our website at writtenwords.uk and some of the other videos on our YouTube channel as well. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and in the meantime, happy writing.